I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. Edward? What's up, buddy? We have a great guest today. Uh, before I say his name, it's technically one of Ed's finds, so I can't gush as much because I didn't find him because then I would look like the weakest link in this podcast, and we know that's not true. That being said, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really high. Uh, our guest... <laughs> We got a former Air Force sergeant up in this piece, uh, a graffiti a, a graffiti artist, which I thought was really cool, Brooklyn, New York, native. He's been on This Is Not Happening on Comedy Central. He's been on Adam Devine's House Party. He's been on Last Comic Standing, where Roseanne Barr said, I didn't like you from the moment I saw you. And he is a writer on Apple TV's The Problem with Jon Stewart, and he's currently on strike, and he just came from jujitsu. That's why he's sweating so much. Everybody, Rob Christensen. Yeah, yeah. I'm the type of guy that says I just came from jujitsu. <laughs> When I arrive somewhere, <laughs> it's raining you out the and I'm right sweating, away. and that's why my shirt is fucked up. But whatever, no this one's is trying to rob. Being a sloppy working class hole, so I'm fitting in perfectly. Uh, all right, Ed, how do you know Ed? That, let's start there, because Ed has a lot of friends. Uh, but... Was it a Jersey show? Was it, yeah, was it Rich's was, show? Uh, Rich's show over yeah. in Jersey, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Well, you have that great bit about uh, selling dust. And I was... Of course he did. I'm a big fan. Yeah, <laughs> Big fan of PCP. Big yeah. fan. <laughs> we used to call it wet. Yep, we used to call we it wet. Too. Yeah, yeah. Dips. Dips, boat. We would call it in the suburbs, we called it boat. That was the first time I... That's I, some real I Philly shit, it. right? Yeah, the suburbs, boat. Get some boat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. And we called it in, in like Brooklyn the Wet Willis. Oh, uh, okay. Because to get it, we were getting it in Harlem, and you'd have to drive up the FDR and get off at Willis Ave. Oh. And then you got that Wet Willis. I got that Wet Willis. got that Wet Willis. That's yeah. a great name. Yeah. It sells yeah. itself. Yeah. I mean, the market is built in. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, you what, drug lingo, to smoke this? drug lingo is some of the best lingo yeah. there it's is. better dude. than diner underground lingo. Oh, 100%. Very that, creative people. Got that yeah. ready, Rock? That's what we yeah. used to get that ready? Yo, get that ready? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, all those guys I know that came up with all those like great names for things, they can't hold a job. They can't put yeah. any of that into Genius. the workforce. You put them into an ad? I yeah. mean, if you if somebody ta could tap that, right? <laughs> they'd be, they'd be millionaires. millionaires. Yeah. yeah. Well, this brings me to the first question. Uh... You had a job where you were a distributor, if you will. I uh, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can verify what that distribution sure, yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to out you. <laughs> yeah. But I was, I, I actually spent most of my life trying not to get a regular job. Yeah. Uh, so when I was a kid, I took my Christmas money and pulled it together with some other buddies, and we started selling weed, like 15, 16. And, and we weren't doing great. We were doing okay. And we just slowly built up from like an ounce, and we got up to like a quarter pound to a half pound. And we're like, all right, the weed money's slow. And it was during the height of the rave scene in New oh, York. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So we're like, if we just take this money, and instead of re-upping on weed, we re-up 100 hits of ecstasy, then that's going to flip even harder. That's, so hard. And it was yeah. all a Dude. dream. Yeah. yeah. Right? I, I yeah. mean, seriously. Like, if we spent You're the thousand. You're Browns now. Yeah, if we spent the thousand on weed, that thousand we could flip into, like, maybe 1,400. But if we spend yeah. it on ecstasy, You're we right. could probably flip the thousand into maybe 3,000. So we went to do that, and we sent my buddy Tom to go get it, and he came back. <laughs> well, how do you elect a guy to do that, by the way? Is it? <laughs> What is the like the qualifications? Process? Yeah, like, yeah what, what is got, it, never, you, What's the vetting process? I know on my that? little crew of guys how it went, but I think every crew of guys is different who gets a job like that. So like you're asking basically how does a 16 year old vet the guy that's going <laughs> that's to buy I mean. the hundreds of ecstasy? <laughs> it's the guy who knows the guy. It was yeah, like, yeah, 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 you yeah, know the guy, you, you know, know. Okay, yeah, all right, you got yeah. it. It's practical. Yeah. And then and he came back with a hundred hits of Tagamint HB, yeah. which is a heartburn medication. It's, <laughs> it's white. That sounded awesome though. It's like man, it sound it's shaped like a diamond and then has like a raised diamond in it so if you shave one side of yeah. it it looks like ecstasy because you shave the words off it with a nail file and shit like that so like we dumped all our money that we made selling weed into this <laughs> and then we had the fake ecstasy so we were like fuck it we're just gonna sell this so fake you knew ecstasy. it was fake when you got it and it was so but tom didn't uh, you know, I want to believe Tom didn't. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I want to believe he didn't. Okay. You know what I'm okay. saying? But yeah. I'll never know 100%. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I still talk to him to this day. Like, I have no beef with him. Like, but maybe he duped the, the, the crew. The, the God honest truth is I never will know if he didn't take a cut yeah. of, of that money. But what are you going to do? But it was the, it was a crew from Brooklyn called BTS. 
bombed the system who was like like terrorizing the rave scene and they sold us the 100 hits of ecstasy that were fake so to get rid of them we were like fuck it let's just go to the raves and sell the fake ecstasy to get our money back uh-huh. and we started doing that and we started and then we were like well fuck it we're selling fake shit let's not sell real shit anymore we'll just sell fake shit because then we get busted oh. we get busted with a fucking yeah. pocket full of Harper yeah. Yeah, yeah right and we don't need no seed money yeah. yeah and so we started doing that but then in order to sell fake shit if you're from Brooklyn and you want to sell fake shit in the rave scene anywhere on the east coast you're going to run into this crew BTS and you, they have to let you do it so we ended up getting in with that crew so like two years later we were selling fake drugs with the people who sold us fake drugs <laughs> if you Dude, can't be the American called, dream yeah. 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 that is yeah. networking at its yeah. finest yeah. and so like in every movie you watch about coming up and the guy who's going to be a drug dealer he like gets his mighty revenge on the people who screwed him yeah. and becomes the fucking Tony Montana but that's not the real shit the real shit is like you were absorbed by the yeah. bigger crew you get it's yeah, like an MLM, you get yeah. absorbed. <laughs> I love it's that. It's a fucking merger. I mean, it's a it's a it's a smart move. Tessio was already smarter. He's always smarter. It's the smart move. Yeah, and then how we got in is because we used to play baseball with Paulie Pork Chops, right? That's not his real name. That's his street name. If you That's his picture name. Paulie Pork Chops. Paulie Pork Chops. Paulie Pork Chops. That's back of his baseball card. <laughs> and so we knew him from like when I say we, it's like me and my buddy Gary and a few other people from the neighborhood. We played from like when we were in grammar school, like. Little League, we played baseball with this kid against him and on some teams with him, and he was like part of BTS. So what we did is in the beginning, we were like, yo, we're going to go out, we'll give you a cut, and you will make sure BTS doesn't beat us up or rob us, say we're with you. And like eventually, we just didn't have to give him a cut no more. Like you just, yeah, right. you pay your way yeah, in, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you start making friends, and sure. people see you around all the time, and yeah. then like the fifth guy you met doesn't know you're only there because you paid Paulie. Sure, right. sure, He sure. thinks you're in, so then yeah, all of a sudden yeah. you're just in. Yeah. And it's basically, as long as you don't fuck up, like as long as yeah, nothing you don't goes bring any wrong, heat on it's kind of like, you're, yeah, yeah, you're just part of the crew. And you're now. selling to yeah. kids. You're not trying to dupe a neighborhood guy. You're right. Yeah. right, right. Yeah. Like, like they did to me. Problem. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Well, so many I can't be like, you know, like, oh, well, that's like a guy. Like, that, that's a guy you can't right. dupe. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? And then our other angle was that they were all much older than us. Like, not Paul. He was the same age. But, like, the rest of the guys, they were older. They were, like, not necessarily white. And they had scars. And, like, they were, like, people wouldn't trust them as much. Yeah. But I was a fresh-faced uh, 16-year-old. Sure, yeah. No record, right, yeah. blonde hair down to no. my shoulders. I would yeah. dress up like a raver, big shoes and shit. Maybe get like a magnetic piercing in my nose oh, or something. Man. And I would go out and do the funny dance. So you were method acting even then. Yes, that's and amazing. Like, like even be that bad, be bad at dancing. <laughs> a happy doofus kid with blonde hair, and then they they trust me. And yeah. I'm selling, I'm selling, I'm selling. <laughs> and then when someone comes back and says, "Oh, you sold me fake shit," I was like, "I well, didn't sell you fake shit. He sold you fake shit." And then it's just like a guy with a scar on his face standing yeah. in the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's unbelievable. That's a fantastic business model. Actually. So how do you yeah. get out of that then? How does that even stop for you? I, I don't see a moment here where it goes bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> it um, was the dancing. <laughs> the dancing? You couldn't take the dancing anymore? I <laughs> fell in love with dancing. <laughs> uh, I, for me, I didn't have like any catastrophe. Of course, I like got caught by my parents doing drugs a bunch, overdosed on drugs, like... Ooh. PCP and ketamine, like the overdoses don't kill you. You just get so annihilated, so inebriated that you wake up in a hospital and you don't know how you got there, Damn. you know? Uh, and then the, the bills would show up and my parents would see. So I was like a kid who was like in trouble, not necessarily that bad, but in trouble a lot. Mm. And my parents were like around, you know? So there was always a whisper in your ear, like you got to do something. Right. Well, so life. luckily you had two parents that were around. They were around. That's helpful. Yeah. Even yeah, yeah, if they're yeah, annoying, yeah. it was like right. a thing. Okay. And so it's basically like, for me, the the best parenting they did was just being like, you shouldn't be doing this. There was nothing they could tell me that could have stopped me. Yeah. But they did put in the back of my head, in my conscience, like, you can't do this forever. You shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. And that was in my head. And in that's my the best head. they can do, actually. I mean, I'm a, I'm a dad of a two-year-old, and even now I'm recognizing, like, the best I can do is just sound advice. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. And hope. I mean, because you're yeah. going to be a knucklehead. Like, there's just no way you're coming from right. my yeah, point. See, I didn't get that. My yeah. dad was like, no, this is what's happening. Like, I, because I went it to. It doesn't re- work. I went to rehab in 10th grade. Like, Me I too. was going. Oh, yeah. yeah. You went to rehab in 10th yeah. grade. Yeah. And it was like, and then I was going to like Narcotics Anonymous meetings. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm for smoking weed. You know what I mean? Like, I was just, I was like smoking weed in 9th grade. Same you know, shit for I got me busted for with like weed. a bit, a uh, couple ounces of weed on the bus. And then um, now I'm meeting heroin addicts. <laughs> 
You know what I mean? The guy yeah. that's driving in the meeting still has like a, a jar of water and a spoon <laughs> under the seat. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like <laughs> the, same, the same thing happened to me, and it was for weed. And I was going to like outpatient, and I have to go like a couple times a week, and they mm -hmm. drug test me and stuff. And I, but I was in the meetings with dudes who were mandated there. They all just got out of jail. Yeah. So you're a, you're actually being influenced by very 100%. serious criminals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 100%. And, and this is before that other shit. This is like 13, 14, yeah. 15. Yeah. I'm in there, and I remember being like, I felt smaller than everyone, and just like a pussy. Yeah. A oh, giant yeah. fucking oh, pussy. Dude. As you should from yeah. guys that have served. I come from, a, like, a, I know a few people that are felons, and when they get out, like, I'm always scared of that family member. Like, whenever I go to reunion and I have to see that guy, I know, like, <laughs> it's always in the back good, of my mind because those there's always fights at Hawaiian reunions. It's like, uh -huh. what happens? Uh -huh. Like, Islander dudes just f drink too much and fly off the handle. And I always know if those fights break out, like, where is that fucking dude? Like, he wouldn't yeah. kill a family member, but uh, he would cr he would crack yeah. somebody to get him in line. Like, they give you the in line hit yeah, like, when you're, yeah, like, yeah, of yeah, age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the last thing. I used to call it the Friday Night Freddy Punch. Like, if you get that shit in an Islander's house or you get that Friday Night Freddy Punch, we had an uncle who used to abuse his family. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you just pray you don't get the Friday Night Freddy Punch. You're hitting enough people to get a name for the hit. You gotta watch out. <laughs> no one was ordered him. He's just living his life. You, th you don't name the punch on the first, second, or third time. Yeah, he's deep. Yeah, you're deep. <laughs> that shit's real, dude. Friday Night Freddy. I, I remember these guys talking about. They were all there for coke and shit, and it was like talking about how their lives fell apart. They ended up in jail. This dude's addicted to sex, and it was like a comedy sketch. Because then he would come to me and be like, "I got caught smoking weed," and yeah. everyone would be like. Who is this kid wasting our fucking yeah, time? Right? It was like that half baked thing where, uh, yeah, yeah, but that's how we're here for weed. And, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Sack Stop, sucked Dick. Dick. You were here for the wood. That, I went to. That uh, guy's a comedian. Sorry. I did like a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I went to a, uh, like a rehab. Like I was so. I was going to NA for like long enough where like I was speaking at like some of these like rehabs. And I go there, I'm 15. And I'm up yeah. there telling a story, and everybody's like, "Who the fuck is this? What's this yeah. kid doing?" Here? And it's your parents worried about you guys, right? And that's like, how you get there. Whose idea yeah. was it to let this kid? You know what I mean? That's how like crazy that whole world. And, like it's a like I, you know, what I mean? I'm sober now, but like some of that uh, did not help the process. It, no, dude, at yeah. all. Uh -uh. It just makes you very comfortable with a certain type of person. Yeah. Sure. And the, it, you, if you're that comfortable, you'll go to where they are. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Totally. yeah. So yeah. did you ever get? clean off anything it didn't sound like you had a addiction problem or did you i mean yeah i was like deep in it like i just had nothing else to do nowhere to go no after school program nothing yeah. like what, there was nothing so i just did drugs and it's just so cliche but like the when i finally stopped doing drugs for good was when i started doing stand-up because it was like something that was very challenging and if like if i didn't focus on it you would just die up there on stage mm -hmm. and i was like holy shit this is intense i'm living in the moment yeah so like boom now i have something and slowly you just get older and boom i'm doing stand up i'm not doing drugs yeah yeah i'm not clean though like i would i'll do ketamine if you have anyone listening has some ketamine yeah. hit, <laughs> what is the thing about ketamine cuz the only time i've ever been intro to it is i had a hairstylist this dude the guy must have weighed 98 pounds gay guy Love this guy. And finally, he opened up to me once and he's like, Yeah, I can't do your hair on this day or cut your hair because I have to. I'm going to this party and I'm going to be on a lot of, I'm going to be in like in a K hole. That's what I call it, right? Yeah, yeah. And I go, What do you do when, when you get in the K hole? And he's like, Well, I go to this dungeon and I get tied up and then I take the, the ketamine and then I just let giant black men just plow me. And that was my intro is did you make your body so numb that you could take any amount of pain? Is that what? My experience is a little different. <laughs> <laughs> I should do the Bob Hope reel now. I mean, I'm a great host. <laughs> I just let it hang there, guys. I'm looking at Ed. Like, Ed I was seeing like the birds around Ed's head. Like, <laughs> <laughs> for now, they're using ketamine to treat like depression and PTSD yeah. and shit. And so, like, I was a, a fucked up kid. And like, when I found, I was doing every drug. And then, like, I was doing... Did this ever happen to you where you're doing so many drugs that you can't yeah. do weed no more? Yeah, yeah. Like, weed just makes you paranoid. Yeah. yeah. It used to make you feel high, and so I can't, weed fell off. And, like, alcohol was just something you did when you're high on other shit. Mm -hmm. And then, like, finally... But when I met ketamine, I was just... It, the other shit fell off. And it was like... So that really happens with weed? I'm sorry, because I think I'm going... I'm a big advocate for yeah, marijuana, I and I day. feel like I'm getting more paranoid than high lately. I remember the day. Oh, really? That's so depressing. Because I was always... I always got paranoid from weed, though. 
I always got paranoid. But I, not as but much I as I'm getting smoking. now. I always smoked weed. I mean, not, I guess, oh, but like 80% of the time I would get paranoid from weed. But cocaine was my, like once I found, ketamine was like I've dabbled with yeah. a little bit, but I was always already fucked up from like four other drugs that I was doing. You know, and I was just in some dude's apartment. Yeah. And he's like, oh, we got some K. I'm like, yeah, sure. It's great for that. It enhances the other drugs. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. See, I love awesome. Molly. I'm similar to Molly. Like uh, Molly, because I, PTSD-wise, I found myself kind of, being okay, like sorting things out in my head while on it and yeah. getting these really great bumps to my endorphins where I'm like, man, I've accomplished some things. Like it was the only time I ever really felt good about myself was sometimes when I was on Molly. Uh, but then I read they were like using that for PTSD. Is ketamine, uh, ketamine similar? I'm I, don't, I don't like to do Molly because I don't want to be happy without my consent. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah I could see that. <laughs> That could be problematic. <laughs> yeah, I did a lot. Of, I was more of like LSD. Uh, yeah, I did like a lot did of that, LSD. Did I did a lot of LSD, LSD, and I fucking went just fucking bonkers. Me yeah, too. Uh, yeah. So many times. La, la, la. I ended up in the fucking rubber room on, on LSD one night. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where at? Bellevue? Here in New York, I don't remember what hospital. Not Bellevue. Or uh, I'm, it could have been. I, I was here in New York, but I don't remember the fucking hospital I was in. But I remember like my parents were standing over me, and they turned into skeletons. Their faces oh. melted off and shit. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it, it went bad one time. Like, that might have been the last time I ever did LSD. Yeah. That's fucking nuts. But That's me, crazy. We oh, you still see it too, right? Like you have that image because like, you're now you reminded me of you an still image see shit. Made. I saw it. No, like I don't see like trails really or anything like that. Uh, I don't think or. You know, but I was at a uh, dead show uh, one Thanks. time, and I saw my parents, like just two old hippies, and I was like, they looked fucking like my parents, and I was just staring at them, <laughs> dead, <laughs> just just like that, and they were like, hey man, what's going on with this kid? <laughs> See, that's just, the thing, I don't want to be a part of anybody else's high. I want to be high, but I don't oh, want to be a yeah, part yeah. of your high. That's what would bum me out about being high in those like giant concert. Those dead shows, yeah, yeah, yeah. dead shows were fucking. They were not. A, uh, there wasn't a lot of fun to do drugs. Yeah, there. Parking lot. Parking lot was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just at a Ween show the other night, and uh, they had all the nitrous outside. Nitrous was. You ever sell nitrous tanks? I, not sell, <laughs> but if it was available, when the hippies showed up to the rave, I was getting high. Totally. It's totally. like when you ask the little Girl Scout, like, "Hey, did you did you sell those Samoans?" Or, uh, <laughs> well, we used so to sell them. them. <laughs> in Northeast Philly, there was a guy who used to break into this dental uh, facility, and he would steal these tanks. Oh. And you know, when you're at the concerts, they have those big tanks, but these guys were getting like the little minis, so you could just right. blast so them. So yeah. you could blast them, and the move was, and this is the scumbag move is to like you just fucking just crush on this tank for i don't know hours right and then sell it yeah uh, <laughs> that's a fake ecstasy pill. and you sell it it's just yeah, like yeah, an, yeah. yeah it's just like and then you sell it and it's like you know it's got like four hits left in it or something like that you just Damn. sold it for a hundred dollars uh so now you're a writer and you're writing for one of the like pop icons of any kind of news you yeah. could ever have. He's like the modern day Walter Cronkite in some ways, in my opinion, <laughs> John Stewart. He's beloved. He's, He's a beloved, yeah, beloved person. Yeah. So after coming from that kind of background and all that shit and getting into comedy and then uh, you're going to be a writer, how does that even happen? How do you like having to show up to a job? And obviously it's an amazing job, but... Yeah. How it happened is they did an open writing submission. Mm. And so I just... The first part of the submission was write 10 jokes and 2,400 people submitted to it, and then they like knocked it down to a second round of like, I don't know, 20 something. So I got lucky, I wrote a joke about Eminem that the head writer at the time liked, and I got into the second round, where it was like a much smaller pool. And like, How fast do you have to write those jokes? Like, do you, are, were you already trained in that, or it's a muscle you had to learn? You just said, you know, set yeah. up punch, set up punch, current event. How did you? It's you for sure crap? a muscle. There's tricks to yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. There's tricks to it, and then like once you like get the muscle, then then like some people are more talented than others, just like anything else. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. like if you're at a certain talent level, you can get the muscle, and now you can be at a professional level. Mm -hmm. But then if someone is like really talented at this, and they have the muscle, they're just yeah. Be, it's like it's like looking at LeBron James and going like, oh, see, so you're great at the technical part, and also you have all the skill sets, all the talents, all the given everything. the yeah. God gifts everything. that you need. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I didn't have the muscle at all. But I was just trying to write like we had to write about the news, and so I was looking for and the news that happened on a day. So like you had to write about the news on this day and submit the news. Oh, so that's day. what they give you? Oh, that nice. yeah. oh, oh, oh. It was just this. This is not a general thing. It was just this submission. And so then I just was trying to be smart about it, and I looked at the news, and I was like, so there's the news that everyone's looking at, but then there's news that's my news. Mm -hmm. So I started going into UFC news. <laughs> 
hip hop news because you're passionate about it just had to happen on the day yeah Yeah, and so did i write a few jokes about the news news like everyone else yes i did but i put in like half of them that were my news yeah and so i I know the the head writer told me that was an eminem joke that got me through the next round one joke that's cool and so then it went to a pool of the 20 something and like in a pool of 20 something i like my odds like any any 20 comics you have life led right yeah like i'm 42 and i i I love this age. I mean, I could say all I want that, you know, I got more opportunity when I was younger, but I love where I'm at yeah. and my perspective is really clear and harsh and it's not going anywhere because I, I'm, if anything, I'll be successful later on in life if that, but as of right now, I like the realities of that. I, I totally agree. Yeah. Why do you feel that way though? Um, <clears throat> I think that like I'm funny enough as like, so let's say you have no life experience. You can get a certain level of funny. Yeah professional comedian funny i'm there yeah but i got i i it's comedy's like my fifth career yeah you know so right. it's like i got so much lived life mm-hmm. yeah that so and then i can find angles on jokes that other people are not gonna find because we've been in the fucking alleys yeah, uh, laying yeah. in the fucking dirt yeah you know what I'm saying? yeah so that's why i like my odds yeah, yeah we had to write for the second round those 20 something people had to write two essays uh one for and one against the same topic Oh, like, wow. like you're in a creative yeah. writing. Class. That's fucking cool. Yeah. And so I almost want to do that just for the. Yeah, it's a great writing. It really it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, opportunity, whatever strategy, whatever you want to call it. But they had a few options to pick from, and one of them was like uh, Blue Lives Matter, defund the pl- police. And so like my dad was a cop, my brother's a cop, I had aunt who was a cop. Like then a bunch of military family. I yeah. was in the military, so I was like, oh, like we're talking government cops. I got. I got inside angles on this. Yeah. So yeah. I took that one and then I, I can write one for because I just, I did call my you dad. Do debate, yeah, you do debate yeah. class. You I, write for yeah. one and for against, and right? And I, I called my dad, I called my brother and I started like trying to get some in scoops inside their head and I got some tidbits that were like really sweet and I was like just looking for lines. Like, oh, this is a punchline. This is a setup that I got from actual cops. Yeah. And then I just went in and write the four and then the against one is easy to write because I've been a criminal the whole fucking time. Yeah. Yeah. So like I can yeah. write. And, and <laughs> like I didn't take it, I took it super seriously. So so like if anyone is listening to this and you're gonna do a submission like it's easy to be like I'm never gonna get this job and just do it just to do it so you feel like you did something but like I took it seriously where like I called I called my fucking people I had like uh, my girlfriend reading it and I was rewriting it like over and over probably rewrote it like 50 times and then like I went through every single tweet I ever did in my life and I found any tweet that could have worked in the in the fucking thing so you write an essay and then you start replacing lines with jokes Mm. and i wrote it like 50 times finding oh this punchline this could be a punchline that works wow and then reworking it and then by the time i was done with it i was just like joke on every fucking line you did what every professional quarterback that's great would do anyone successful in life does where you leave nothing to chance right where you're like you treat it like work Right, <laughs> like yeah, a yeah. working class. Not, yeah. No pun intended, but you treated it like fucking work. Yeah, you didn't want to leave anything to chance. Like you right. don't want to say if you didn't get it, it's because I didn't do right. all that shit. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. awesome, yeah. man. Yeah, that's put great. stand up in it, and then also I also did, and this is the one other big piece of advice. I put my personality in it. I leaned in hard, and I made sure that nobody who read this would think it was written by anybody but me. Yeah, like, that's it smart, was dude. Like, I leaned so hard. So unique. I curse. My essay had curses in it. Yeah. I'm a fucking smart ass. I'm sarcastic. I'm cynical. So was my essay. Yeah. Like the whole fucking thing, it was all in there. And then, and then I got an interview and then like, then they, from the 20 something, they interviewed, I don't know, like a little over 10 people and like some people lost the job in the interview. Yeah. Like, I, and then I, like a lot of people do in corporate yeah. America, right? Yeah. That but interview's huge. I prepped for the interview. I fucking prep for. How'd you get inside track for that? You just I didn't. Around, oh, I just didn't. Doing I just, your own thing. I, I never prep for an interview in my fucking life except for this one. But I just went to the fucking basics, like a moron, like a baby on day one. Yeah. Interview questions. Yeah. Oh. I googled interview questions, but then I went deeper and deeper and deeper, and I had my girl there, who's like a great writer herself, and I was like, <laughs> "What do you think they're gonna?" Ask? Rob starts out. Well, my greatest weakness is. <laughs> but, that, but that's the thing. Is eating expired tuna fish on but, principle? Right. So that's the thing, just though. Starting with Johnson, I was like, all right, uh, relax. <laughs> but the person who's interviewing me is a really good fucking comedian. This yeah. head writer, right? Yeah. Chelsea Devantes. She's so I was like, a really good fucking comic is not going to ask me what's my weakness. No, right. She's going to come with some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's going to ask me, and it's a current events job. So I was digging current events, everything like that, and I was like super prepped. I was on a Zoom doing the interview, and I had my prep sheet right here. Like a fucking nerd, just right yeah, next to me, yeah, yeah. fully prepped, and so like I, and then it worked out. I got the job because I treated it yeah. serious. Yeah, and that's awesome. Dude. I've never treated anything serious before this. Yeah. So like, 
like this is. You just knew an accountant. <laughs> I you couldn't, know what I mean? and I didn't treat the first round that serious. Really? Yeah. Like other than like trying to make it personalized to myself, sure. I just wrote ten jokes that week. I also submitted to a. a the new, um, what's the show that fucking, whatever. There was a new show that had a writing packet going in. I wrote for this other show, At Midnight. At Midnight was coming back. Oh, yeah. oh right. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did a, a submission for At Midnight, and I had to do a self-tape for an acting gig, and it was 10 pages of dialogue. Jeez. So I did all those in the same fucking week. Wow. So none of them was like that focused. But then when I got to round two and I knew, I knew it was going to go from 20. Yeah. Once you go from like 2,400 people yeah. to 20, yeah, like that's, that's, a big deal. that's a big, yeah. And, and then it was like. And it's warranted, the time's warranted then. Like, you right. know, you, yes, you did absolutely. your thing. Either yeah. way, you did your yeah. thing yeah. that first round, but the yeah. time was warranted for the second and, and then one. I'm, I'm a competitive person, right? And so in com comics, it's like easy to be too cool to compete. I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I get it. I want to like, man, yeah, you know? to be like too fucking cool for school. It's, it's pretty sexy to give a shit, everybody. Yeah, yeah. You know? I, <laughs> I give a lot of shits, right? <laughs> like, the beginning of my life was listening to Eminem where I just didn't give a fuck. <laughs> that don't work. <laughs> that don't work. <laughs> Saying it and marketing it works, but doing it does not work. It's like... It's like people will make fun of that Eminem like lose yourself song. Like if you could only have one shot, yeah, one yeah, moment, yeah, one yeah, opportunity. Yeah. People make fun of that super oh, easy, Matt super Corny, easy, oh, whatever. When Do shit happens, really? people put make that in fun mind. of that. Yes, it's a punchline. Yeah, yeah. bro, it's, that's well. That's, the hip hop community is pretty harsh though. Yeah, like, I they, guess so. Yeah. I, I know nothing about yeah. that. And then community. comics yeah. will make fun of the white boy who gets pumped to that song. You know what I'm saying? Oh right. I'm that guy. I unironically, dead seriously. Put that song on. Yeah. <laughs> I did. A, I, I, I got to the finals of a comedy contest, and I was in the back room in the green room listening to that on repeat. And I, I went up and won the contest. Uh, dude, that's badass, dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it works. It works. Yeah. I mean, it's like bum 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 bum. I'm just sitting there. I'm bobbing and weaving like I'm gonna get in a fucking fight, bro. Like, like, and, <laughs> drop some mom spaghetti in the middle of the interview. <laughs> you can work just it. You know. Like, so did you get this gig after you did? Uh, this is not happening. And then the Adam Divine house party stuff. Yeah, I did all that. Yeah. And that's how you kind of got when you, you referenced your people. That's how you kind of facilitated people to help put in positions to win to get these opportunities. Are all found on your own? Um, n so like I have one. I had a manager. Yeah. Oh, I won that comedy contest. Got an agent, and the agent sent on sent me on two auditions. One was for uh, uh, House Party with Adam mm -hmm. Devine, and one was for Last Comic Standing on NBC. And I booked both of them. So my first two, I'm just out here in the that wind. No one's helping me. And the yeah. first dude to help me, I booked. And then I went on a long drought. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I hit That's hard. That's how it always happens. Yeah. But you, you're lucky to hit hard fast. Yeah. yeah. It's great. I was in like my fucking seventh, sixth or seventh year of comedy at that yeah. point. Yeah. Wow, that's really early on. That's yeah. huge. Yeah. That's and I, awesome. It was my first good 15 minutes. Yeah. My first good 15 minutes was on television. Yeah. That's amazing. Every fucking word of it. Wow. It's an amazing fucking bit. The, the, uh, this is not happening. It's yeah, so you. good, dude. So then that, and that it's was so later. Good. Yeah, that was later oh, after that was the later? drought. Yeah, oh, okay. after the drought. I was like 2018. We taped that. Oh, okay. And so and like it was never a network. So uh, uh, this is not happening was because of two producers. Uh, they knew who I was vaguely from the scene, and then like. I like went to a fucking screening and the guy who was the director of the movie was best friends with the producer. And so I emailed him and said, hey, I went to your friend's screening. How are you doing? And he was like, I'm doing good. Do you have a story that you can tape? So that's how that happened. Crazy. What if he was like, yeah, I'm with BTS and I remember you from the old days. <laughs> he's like, Dude, I, mean, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. He's like, <laughs> he's like, you look like the guy that sold me fake ecstasy 20 years ago. <laughs> no, no, no offense, but I would have their money in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yes, I was. Here you are, <laughs> sir. <laughs> I love it. And then Adam Devine's house party was... Uh the people who were picking the comics on that were Adam Devine and another writer on the show and those two guys picked me because I'd had a good set yeah. so if it was up to executives at networks yeah. I'm never getting fucking yeah, it's about marketability but right. um, the guys that are right. actually allowed to make decisions made I it for you I fucking came awesome. in I walked in like a G and smashed the fuck out of yeah, the show and your they, job. Put, they put me on the show that's amazing and the same thing with Wanda Sykes on Last Comic Standing it was Wanda Sykes and Paige Herowitz they were picking the people if NBC was picking I would never be on yeah no, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. Now this is funny because we're in a writer strike. Not that that's funny, but you it's also it's kind of funny. <laughs> but you <laughs> also <laughs> weren't. Are you? You're in a different position now, I assume, than in '08, where that writer strike you had to go work yeah, for a so manager. I got out of, as an assistant, yeah, which yeah. is hilarious. So I graduated college in like 2007, kind of late. I was in my late 20s because I went in the military for a little while, and in the Air Force, not real military. And then. Uh, <laughs> Wait, 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 you gotta wait, wait, give context real quick before <laughs> yeah. the, some of these veterans are listening to the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out of here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it Air Force? How, why is the Air Force not uh, real? Uh... It is real military, but it's um, 
It's did you do boot camp? I did boot camp. He's a yeah, sergeant, I did, right? Yeah, boot, I, I worked camp, my way up to sergeant. Was, yeah. Is Air Force boot camp uh, like for? Is it like it's harder? physical? Is it's it, physical. Uh-huh. And it's like. 45% physical and 55% mental whereas like the marines would be like 85-15 yeah, and no diss to anyone being stupid except for the army you know <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, but that was answering an earlier question. Did I? How did I fucking like get out of Brooklyn? It was I went to the military. Yeah, yeah. And uh, came out, of the, and then military paid for college. And so I really have no complaints about the military. Yeah, like, that's I, awesome. I, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Because I was in you the got Air in Force. And out. Yeah, 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 you know, you didn't yeah. have to. You did, did you go overseas or anything like that? I, I did. I went to Bulgaria. Yeah, because George Bush. Uh, George W. Bush got elected when I was in basic training, and then the towers fell down when I was in New Jersey doing like final tech training, working on planes. The towers fell down. That started twenty years of war. So I did get activated. Did like a year and a half activation stuff like that, which is also like one of the best things that could happen to me. You know, like I mean, Bulgaria, got Bulgaria, you got out of scene for a while, right? But the other thing is Bulgaria is a good place to go, like because yeah, yeah. my my cousin was uh, he in was a marine, shit. he was in the fucking right. shit. Oh, yeah. man, so I worked that. on an air refueling plane. Bulgaria was a strategic location for fighter jets taking off from Germany or the East Coast or wherever, getting refueled, bombing in uh, Iraq, and then coming back, getting refueled, and going home. And so Bulgaria was strategically the right place. Nice, that's a great. There place was no to be. war where I was, yeah. Yeah. and what it did, it got me off drugs for a very long time. That's amazing. Got me started going to the gym more regularly. Like you know, it was just a it's good. Made you a better version of yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then uh, got out of the military, went to college, uh, punched someone in the face in college, uh, got locked up, went to jail for like it was like a six day sentence, and they let me out in like three. How was that for the three days? Great, easy. It was like uh, what, was, what was the location where you county were? jail, San Luis Obispo County Jail. Oh, it's back in Cali. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't like in the. I was in a section for short people who had short stays or whatever the word for that is. It's not stay because it wasn't a hotel. Uh, <laughs> sentence. Short, short excursions. Yeah. <laughs> short sentence. A little journey. Yeah. A little. And it was like being at a camp because we were in like a big room with like thirty bunks. And it was for like non-violent lower. Uh, I mean, mine was violent, but it wasn't like I stabbed a guy. Like sure, punched right. a guy in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and it was a misdemeanor. They, in Cali, they put me in the wow, fucking county jail wild. for a misdemeanor. Man, it's crazy. Cali's and so crazy. It's fucking dumb as fuck. Yeah. yeah. I almost. I never had to go to county. I. Uh, I got fucking lucky. I. Uh, You've had some cops beat your ass though. Well, they beat my ass that night, but uh, <laughs> I raised my. I raised my hand to a cop. Oh shit! And you did get lucky though. Fucking yeah. maced me, and yeah, they took me to the hospital, and then like. You know, she's the, the nurse is trying to like clean the uh, mace out of my eyes, and she was like not doing it right. So I grabbed it and I bumped her, oh, and the cops were like, "Miss, uh, exit the room." And then so they just beat the wild. shit out of me, dude. Just beat the shit out of me. And then I was from there. You go to county. Yeah. But one of the cops who had you know busted me for drinking so many times, and he like he knew me by name, called up the judge, and the judge came and like. Did it because that's the thing. If they can't, if you can't get in front of a judge, you go to county yeah, yeah, until yeah. you can get in front of a judge. So he hooked you up. Totally hooked yeah, me up. Yeah, he saved you, man. Totally. Because counties, no, so, especially Bucks no County, like that's me. where yeah. it's yeah. yeah. I come out of there knowing how to make meth. Seriously, you know what I mean? Right, yeah, 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 and, yeah, and fucking how to sharpen a blade, real. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and then county jail in L.A. would be the I think they call it the towers. Yeah. That's a really bad place. My friend went in there. My best friend Gary went in there, and he was a diabetic, and he had a machine hooked up to him, an insulin pump, but the insulin pump had a digital clock in it. And when they found out there was a clock, because you don't have time. They take time oh, away from you. Yeah, that's part you don't know of, what fucking time yeah, it is. That's part of the thing. Uh, the yeah. fucking Mexican dudes ripped his insulin pump out of his body Whoa. to have the clock. They don't fuck around. Yeah. Whoa. They're not playing. That's not, yeah. And, yeah, so that's how, not, and then in New York, County is Rikers. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and right. yeah, that, that's not fun. <laughs> no, dude. Not, no. That's not a fun time. So I was in San Luis Obispo, California. <laughs> that's so I funny. Got an easy when one. you say Rikers, you know it's not fun. Like the name just says it all. <laughs> yeah. Well, we were talking yeah. about earlier Rikers, about no, when you go you. to like, uh, when I was going to those uh, meetings when I was like 14, I would always hear the county is worse than prison. Like yeah. going oh, to, yeah. like, county is, that's the worst place they don't to separate. Be a lot of people in no. county it, they, and it's a temporary thing so yeah. they don't have to spend a lot of like they care they don't have to yeah. put any care yeah. into yeah. it and yeah. they, they're, they're, they're not settled in yeah so it's like people are on edge but my so, mind was easy so you get out of you get out on your three three days so i but i get out in like 2008 when the whole world fell apart yeah. uh, the, oh. the the mortgage crisis yeah. yeah right so it's a mortgage crisis it was the worst since the great depression the, uh, the economy mm-hmm. and then i had this little i just went to jail on my record and when the economy is really bad, they do really strict background checks on everyone because there's more job seekers. 
than there are jobs. The employers have the upper hand, so they're vetting very yeah. hard. If you were looking right now, people need people. You're not getting a lot of background checks in this economy because there's a lot more jobs than there are people. Okay. Yeah. So I just couldn't get a fucking job. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the one job that didn't do a background check was this uh, this manager. He had just an agent who had repped giant clients, but I don't want to say his name or the clients he repped because I don't want to give him no fucking props because he's a piece of shit. Hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah, hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And, that uh, I feel like you know what I feel like you just gave us a little more cred than I you know yeah, yeah, I was good, like yeah good. yeah right because you're know, working because he'll definitely hear it on yeah, this he's podcast gonna, he's coming around the bend. sure this I'll guy's hear, listening I'll stand tall on that I'm sure this coming millionaire the bend. <laughs> so he just op- he he got fired from his agency this is how big of a dick he was he got himself fired from one of the top three agencies. Uh, the number one of the top three at the time. And he had a pay or play contract because he repped, he had discovered some really big people who were making a lot of money. So he got a pay or play, which means if they fire you, they pay you to the end of your contract. So they fired him. He had like three years left on his contract. So and then his salary was like $350,000 a year. Uh, and this is 20 years ago. So that's equivalent to what, 500 yeah, now? Really? Yeah. And, uh, and so he opened up his own management company because the fucking agency had to pay him for the next three years wow. his salary. So he could, he could afford to invest the money he was making from the other place to build this up. Yeah. So he had it, even though he's an asshole, yeah. Yeah, yeah. because he can make you money. Yeah. 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 And so I was his, I was his assistant. And, it was and why like, that job, though? That he didn't do a background check. Well, but so that was solely it. I wanted to be in the entertainment. Okay, industry. all right. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah, I was. Yeah, I'm yeah, asking. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So did you, you knew know, you wanted did to Did you do know that. that he didn't have? He wasn't doing background checks. Like, nope. is there a like no. a like a list serve? <laughs> you're like <No. laughs> you're going to. He's like, yeah. they don't check here. You can <laughs> get away with fake piss here. Like all. The- <laughs> I, I went to every job interview and lied about the background check in every job. Nice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I just lied. Yeah. Because either they're gonna do the background, I'm gonna be honest and they're not gonna hire me, or they're gonna lie. I'd rather ask for forgiveness than ask for permission. Hundred yeah, percent. Yeah, they're gonna find it. if they're doing a background check, they're not gonna hire you. Right. Yeah, yeah, totally. Or, or I lie and say nothing's wrong, so they don't do the background check. Yeah, and I'm yeah, in. exactly. But this guy, there was he was a brand new company. It was he. It was the first employee hired. You know, you were the first. I was the first employee hired at this <laughs> new management company. He didn't do a background check. He's like doing his management. You're like, have you thought this about? Guy it? Looks good. Have you thought about branching out in an ecstasy? Dose? <laughs> I, so, but that's the thing is like, so at this, an angle. <laughs> I was really beat down in life at this point. Like, uh, cause I was broke. I was broker than I'd ever been in my entire the worst fucking life ever, in man. a new city in Los Angeles. I don't know nobody and, uh, I had no options. So I ate a lot of shit that I would have never eaten in any other yeah. point in my life. That yeah. was my shit eating time. Mm-hmm. Grateful for it right now. You know what I'm saying? I treat better people, people better now cause of the way he treated me. Yeah. But, uh, I couldn't do nothing. Like I, I couldn't like really look him in the eye. It was like that bad. And I was terrible. I was a bad assistant. Like, he'd be late for meetings. It happened like twice where he, people would call him, be like, is he showing up? And I'd say, no. <laughs> Just because. Why? No, I'm an idiot. <laughs> because I was so, I wasn't, my brain wasn't working because I was so poor and yeah. under so much pressure. And I had this crazy boss. Yeah. And I was just getting everything wrong. How long did you? Did you have the job for less than a year? About a, close to a year. That's I had a to, long time uh, for a yeah, job. Yeah. You like that you're that, that the, bad at. You yeah, ever have yeah. that job where you wake up on a Monday and you're sick to your stomach? Yeah, Sunday go, night. Yeah, yeah, Sunday night you're getting sick to your this stomach. This was it. Okay, it was, it was crazy. I felt so terrible Sunday nights, and then like. He would like keep me there. There was nothing much going on because the writers went on strike, and yeah. this guy reps all writers. And so I'm there, but he would like he like cut my hours, and he wouldn't pay overtime, and then he would like keep me the full time. Oh. So like uh, so like he'd only pay me for four hours, but for some reason I'm there like six, seven, eight hours. And you didn't a day. feel confident to stick up for yourself because you needed the job. I was so an bad. idiot. Yeah, oh. I was a yeah. fucking idiot. And it was like I was so close to the top with this guy. Like it was like my first job in the industry and I wasn't confident that I was going to be uh, talent. I thought at the time maybe I was going to be an agent or a producer. Oh, you so know, you, like, this was like a huge yeah, step. I had right. just Direction. dabbled in, I did improv in college and I did a, a few to stand up a few times, yeah. but I wasn't committed yet. I wasn't going to open mics. You're right. I was going to be in the business somehow, but I didn't know it was going to be talent. And so I was so close to just touching, like I was on the on the phone regularly with like the head of CAA, the head of yeah. William Morris. Like he was the, He's didn't the get biggest hired. dogs in the game. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was right there, so I was like, maybe if I could come around the bend and I could earn the, a spot here, yeah, I could turn it into a producing for one of his clients one day, you know. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't. I was. I'm bad at fucking small talk. I'm bad at introductions and talking to people. I'm a terrible assistant. Yeah, like it wasn't gonna work. It's kind of wild that people that go through. It's like such a horrible culture. Like this assistant just being treated like garbage 
for years, and then they it's come a hazing up. effect, right? Because they it creates just yeah. this this horrible and that's why culture. they're awful yeah because they go to that mail room they sit on yeah. somebody's desk yep. and then the next thing you know they get their shot and they're like oh i'm gonna bury everyone yeah. who wants this opportunity well, they think that's how that's what you're supposed to do yeah. it's not even I, I i mean i think for the general consensus not everybody's evil there's some fucking awful fucking humans in there but they think that's what you're supposed to do yeah, yeah. like i've seen it in advertising where people oh yeah because you like, work with some big ad uh, agencies man i've worked with some horrible people man when i i like it was a like I was a fucking drug addict for and then I fell into like a post production job and you know then I started working with like pe on Pepsi commercials and stuff yeah. like that like just crazy big money and some of the worst people I've ever met in my life some of these yeah. ad advertising people just horrible to each other mm -hmm. and then people and then you just see it trickle down and yeah. it's just like dude this sucks what's uh what's one awful. one thing that this guy did that you remember that will never leave you it doesn't have to be like dramatic or anything yeah. but what's like a gross thing he did you're like i can't believe this human exists well he was like so so evil that he did clue me into some game he got accidentally gave me the game because like one time he like made a comment about like i should get new something new shoes or tie i don't remember what it was but then i had to it led to the conversation of like i have no money like I have no money, I'm barely making rent, so I got to call my mother sometimes. That's how bad that job was too. Wasn't yeah, even making. Oh, bills. he was paying me ten dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah. those and, jobs are like a hundred grand a year starting yeah, yeah, to yeah. work for that big of a guy. Yeah, sure. And so we got into the conversation that I'm broke, and then he was like, instead of like being like, oh, I'll pay you more money or lend you some money or anything, I'll give you a bonus at Christmas. No, there was no bonuses either. If, instead of he told me he was like, that's why this job's not for you. These assistant jobs are for people who were rich already. You should be this. Uh, this job should go to someone who's got a dad in the industry already. Mm -hmm. This is not a job for you. You should be doing something else. He actually told you the he fuck told wow. truth straight the fuck up. Yeah, wow. he told you the real deal. Like we yeah. don't hire poor people here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I we hire. We do favors here. Yeah. And the only reason I was hired is because like the pay was so low, and his agent, his new management company, was so small and unknown that he couldn't get one of those other guys. Yeah. And that's why I was because there. there was no clout. Yeah that came with sitting on his yeah. desk anymore yeah yeah that's Ooh. amazing that's amazing honestly dude the, the fact that he told you that like yes what was he that? really did school like, you my mind just was like expanded like it was straight up giving me the game yeah like, telling me like because you don't find that out until you've yeah. until so you're you so look, far in you're, you're already looking, addicted to you're it. looking back yeah, and yeah. you're like you still did stand up after that that might have made me not want to get into it because i'm like I'm, I'm a poor kid it, there's no way i'm getting in and then no uh, connection also like so i was like fuck it i think i'm gonna try to do te the talent side or whatever so i started doing improv classes in uh santa monica and to get there to the improv class on time, I had to leave work at like six o'clock, which is a normal thing to request. <laughs> That's right. actually late. Like, <laughs> it's a, late. It's a five yeah. o'clock, nine to five day. Yeah. Five. And, and he was only paying for me for the first four hours anyway. And I had to ask, <laughs> oh my God. This fucking cocksucker. <laughs> oh, holy shit. <laughs> so I had to ask to leave at six o'clock every Thursday. And he asked me why. And it was like for improv. And then he gave me the, he gave me the thing of like, yo, you're too old. Like, right. you're too old, you're not beautiful enough. Like, if you wanted to make it, if you, you need to be where this guy was. And, like, he at the time, it was when Will Ferrell's were big, uh, Will Ferrell movies were big. And, like, he would, like, point to the background, a scene, and you're like, you see these extras right here? They're all huge kids at UCB. And so they're young kids at UCB, and they're extras or have bit parts in Will Ferrell movies. They're the ones who are going to make it. And, Schooled you again, yeah, right? Yeah, he's like, you're not gonna make it oh well, that's, that's stupid so, wow yeah well, how easy is that to say because what yeah one percent of the people make it well, yeah. way to go Houdini. Yeah. like yeah. i'm supposed to be impressed with you yeah and then far be from me to my defend dream. the guy yeah, i know but, right uh, i think from his point of view he just saw the game was already rigged yeah the, the, the game was rigged for him too he was he's a new yorker his and like he, he all right i'll give you his first name his first name was michael and i called him mike once and he yelled at me for 15 minutes he's like, <laughs> <laughs> Cause I let a I let a yo Mike slip out of my mouth. And he stood over my desk. Okay. Like, oh my. I God. am Michael to you. <laughs> this. Hey, listen to this yeah. though. So I'm in the same position. Like I've only had like office jobs. I've never because I never wanted to do manual labor like my my the guys in my family right and i would always let my working class whole shit slip and it would be stuff like that like yo timbo and timothy doesn't know why you're calling him that real familiar <laughs> like people get in those like especially when you're like an underlink they get very cur like oh. curl clutching it's I unbelievable called, dude. i called a guy by his last name one time he fucking do not and just shut down the whole operation <laughs> 
do not refer to me by my last name. So now my dream is to get in those rooms and be exactly what I was then and just watch them eat it. Yeah. I had to eat it. I want to make you eat it now. I mean, that's my dream. Yeah. That's my revenge yeah. dream, man. You're going to be an asshole just like them. You see how the cycle... <laughs> Then I'll, then I'll shake the hand of that guy. Like you, I'd shake your hand. <laughs> so you leave that, and then everything just starts getting put together. Like, how do you no. get out of LA? No. I mean, how do you get the fuck out of LA now? One, one more thing about that guy. Like, no, more, no, things are not put together. <laughs> one, one more thing about that guy is that. Uh, I, I was like calling my mother and telling her about this shit. So, and my mother's assistant for like an evil corporation and shit. And, and here in, in Manhattan, yeah. mergers and acquisitions type shit. Yeah, the yeah. most M&A, evil shit. But yeah. she does, it's, they do great by her. She has a high paying job. Um, but she's an administrative assistant. So I would call her and talk and bitch and moan to her. She knows about this guy. And he was doing live comedy shows after I'd left the job. And she's like, I got to meet him. You got to take me to the comedy show. So I went and I introduced him to my mother. And he said, uh, he told my mother I was the worst assistant he had ever had. <laughs> To my what? mother's face. Wow. And at that point, it was like my mother loved it because it was like didn't let down. I, I, I prefaced this guy's the worst asshole on yeah, the planet. He lived amazing. up to it and oh. then so. Yes. And he was to wow. her the worst asshole on the planet. Wow. And I got out of that job. Why uh, do I respect this guy all of a sudden when do I do not? He's, I, a, I, no, no, he's a rich. <laughs> let me tell you, he's, a, he's a rich kid from Manhattan oh. who got his parents paid for him to go to law school. I hate that shit. He passed the bar yeah. and then became a talent manager. He did the he bare never, minimum he, to get where he's at. Basically. He never fucking struggled once in his fucking life. Yeah. And he discovered. Uh, like a, and I don't. If I say who he discovered, uh, he discovered Jackass. Oh, yeah. And okay. for a minute, they were everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a huge, huge find. Huge. Holy yeah. shit. And huge. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But it's also the type of person who would see someone get injured and be like, <laughs> <laughs> right. This yeah. is it. Yeah. Right. How <laughs> <laughs> plug yeah. we are at. <laughs> Find me at Rob Loves Bagels, everybody, That's every, great. everywhere. Uh, yeah, Rob Loves Bagels, BrooklynRob.com. Love it. That's Anything it. coming up? You go doing the road a lot now because of the, the, the no, strike? No, nothing major coming up. I'm on strike. Fuck billionaires. Hell yeah. You know, except for the ones that like me. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie. You can follow me at uh, Ed McGowan Comedy on all the socials. And then uh, we have a uh, email address. If you have a problem at work, you got a problem with HR. No. We're not going to fix it, but email us at uh, workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. Love it. Uh, at Josh Ricardo, joshricardo.com. Ed, take us out. Oh, guys, we'll see you guys again next week. Oh, one last thing, guys. Yo, uh, big announcement. We've joined a brand new podcast network called Connected Podcasts. And I know you thought the working class holes were just about being disgruntled. We're not. We have a mission, making you laugh. Their mission, helping us drive this network to the top and be number one. Dude, we're, I know. We're so psyched. And you got to be sure to check out some of the other great shows because they have some truly great ones. And when I say truly, one of them's called Truly Darkly Creepily and the other one's called One Broke Actress. Just some of my favorites. Check it out. We'll see you guys again soon. 